Unraveling the Mysteries of Dorothea Lange's Migrant Mother, James Estrin, The New York Times Company, 2018. Dorothea Lange's 1936 portrait of Florence Owens Thompson and her daughters is so well known that finding anything new to say about it seems futile. Yet, as with the Mona Lisa, to which the migrant mother photo has been compared, the image retains an air of mystery. But Dorothea Lange, Migrant Mother, a new book from the Museum of Modern Art, offers fresh insights as it weaves a compelling tale about some little explored details. Written by Sarah Meister, a photography curator at MoMA, the book comes out at a time when faces of desperately poor people in migrant caravans dominate the news. I thought, could there possibly be anything new to say about this picture, Miss Meister said. But Lang is so important. I find her politics so admirable. Her sense of commitment and her ability to distill very important and complex arguments into imagery that made those arguments seem absolutely impossible to ignore. It feels particularly timely. Because the photograph was made while Mrs. Lang was working for the Federal Farm Security Administration, the photo is available to everyone, and it has been used in many ways, including as a postage stamp, a 1,000-piece puzzle, and on trinkets, t-shirts, posters, and postcards. Part of why so many people relate to the image was perhaps the anonymity of this family, which could have been any of millions of Americans suffering through the Great Depression, Miss Meister said. But in 1978, Miss Thompson wrote to the editor of the Modesto Bee newspaper, explaining that she was the woman in the photo and that she felt exploited because she was never compensated for the image. Florence Owens Thompson, a migrant agricultural worker with her children in Napomo, California in March, 1936. Credit Dorothea Lang. The Thompson family in Napomo Ms. Thompson was a 32-year-old widow. Credit, Dorothea Lang. Ms. Thompson with her children in Napomo. Credit, Dorothea Lang. A subsequent Associated Press article in the Los Angeles Times revealed that Ms. Thompson was not of European descent, as had been commonly assumed but a full-blooded Cherokee Indian from Oklahoma. That detail, Ms. Meister said, raises the compelling question of whether migrant mother would have resonated so widely if viewers knew the subjects were Native American. We have never been a race-blind country, frankly, Ms. Meister said. I wish that I could say that the response would have been the same if everyone had been aware that she was Cherokee, but I don't think that you can. Miss Meister says she doesn't think that Miss Lang knew the details of Miss Thompson's background. Unlike with most of her other assignments, there are no known field notes from Miss Lang about this shoot in Napomo, California. And the captions in the Library of Congress are, Miss Meister said, most likely inaccurate. Miss Thompson's relatives have insisted, for example, that they did not sell their tent for food as the captions declared. With the help from librarians at the San Francisco Public Library, Ms. Meister pieced together how the inaccurate caption information probably came about. After Ms. Lang fil filed her pictures to the San Francisco News, a reporter for the United Press went to the migrant encampment in Napomo. Although Ms. Lang and apparently the Thompson family had left days earlier, her photos were published with the United Press's Reporters article. Details from it appear in the captions in the Library of Congress, Ms. Meister said. 
This edition of Miss Meister's book is part of One on One, a series in which each volume delves into a single piece in MoMA's collection. The volume on Migrant Mother explores a print that was made for MoMA's 1949 exhibit, Six Women Photographers, which brings us to the case of the missing thumb. It is easy to tell whether a print of Migrant Mother was made before 1939 because that year, Miss Lang had an assistant retouch the negative and remove Miss Thompson's thumb from the bottom right corner, much to the chagrin of Roy Stryker, her boss at the Farm Security Administration. While that was a fairly common practice at the time, Mr. Stryker thought it compromised the authenticity not just of the photo, but also of his whole FSA documentary project, Miss Meister said. But Lang considered the thumb to be such a glaring defect that she apparently didn't have a second thought about removing it. In the print from the Library of Congress below, the thumb is still in the image's lower right corner. A Library of Congress print of Miss Thompson and her children with the missing thumb. You will see the thumb right here. Destitute mother, the type aided by the WPA, credit Northia Lang, MoMA. You will see the thumb is now missing, missing here. Even the New York Times altered the image, including once where the children had been removed and the dingy interior of the tent made to appear as wisps of clouds in a bright sky, Ms. Meister wrote. The paper also ran a heavily retouched print on July 26, 1936, shown above, that heightened the contrast between the mother and the background, minimizing the presence of Thompson's offending thumb. Miss Meister said she loved an unsolved mystery, so searching for the answers of whether Migrant Mother was made in February or March 1936, or where the captions came from and why they upset the family, was satisfying, but to her, correcting the historical record was especially meaningful. As a civilization, we need to be able to establish facts and still accept that for some people, this might represent the pinnacle of motherhood, she said. For others, this might represent the depth of the depression. And for others, this might represent a suppressing of racial identity. Each of those interpretations is perfectly valid so long as we agree on the facts. I don't believe there are alternative facts, she said. I think you can have alternative interpretations. This is the final photo, Miss Thompson with her children in Napomo. Credit, Dorothea Lang.